he gets there. The alternative media, Jerry. That's where you hear the truth. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. Welcome back to Media Monarchy, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato, your host, webmaster, DJ, and so much more. And it's time for the very merry month of May's edition of the Mary Jane Report. And we're joined again by our friend, Mr. Chris of MaryJane.Report. Welcome back, buddy. Hey, James. Pleasure to be here, as always. Thanks, man. I appreciate you being here. So, a couple things to note. It's actually, as I uh, noted on my morning show today, we are actually we're recording this on Thursday, May 11th, 2017. And the late, great Bob Marley died on this yep. day in history. I saw you even, you tweeted something about that. I did. You know what? It's so... It's so strange because this in months I have I've maybe put up since I've been doing this about seven or eight months on the on the site and the blog a picture that you know goes with my my post every day and I had Bob Marley up there ready to go and for some reason I switched it I, I was unaware of his death I know his birthday February sixth but I didn't know this was the anniversary of his death and it took CNN to let me know that <laughs> with some other somebody else posted <laughs> something about it you know um, but so they actually do serve a purpose once in a you know in a in a trillion years CNN but um, yeah so I yeah. Is, uh, it's the anniversary of his death today. Yeah, I'm a huge. I'm a musician and I'm just a huge fan. Um, and the biggest successes I've had with my career have been writing. Reg- uh, I had one particular reggae song. It's been a couple movies and TV shows. Um, oh, cool. But yeah, I'm a big Bob Marley fan. Cool. That's well. Uh, you, so you got it from the Cannabis News Network. <laughs> uh, there you go. Right. Yeah. The Pharmaceutical <laughs> News Network it should be PNN. And I actually I don't typically go into death. And death anniversaries on the morning show that would open up yeah. some whole other world of things. I usually like to let's talk about the birthdays and things like that. Yes. So yes. you actually, when you and I were getting this set up, you you said, <laughs> and I didn't exactly catch what you meant until you just explained it to me a few minutes ago. You said Conan O'Brien's pushing the envelope. That's right. And I didn't, and I didn't at first get it. So actually, why don't you explain that? And that'll get us into our first big story, which is actually 70 stories here on this Mary Jane report for the month of May. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, um, well, I, I found, um, I stumbled upon in doing my research every day, about an hour, five days a week, and I do the report. And I found a story, um, basically, quote unquote, what you can do if your neighbors are smoking cannabis. And it came from Birmingham Mail which is a UK based publication. And then I started look, you know, for some reason I said, well, there's another one, the same title. And, and right away, you know, Conan pops into my head because he does this every once in a while. I didn't realize there was more than one, but there's, you know, where he goes and researches the media and they all, you know, basically just read from the same script. Yeah. I just know actually, it's just to interrupt you real quick. I yeah, only, yeah. I only know the one I can remember now off the top of my head is the, the gay marriage one where he was going to do a gay marriage on his show, I think, when he was doing it yes, you know, on yes. location. But even when I was watching that one, in my head I was thinking, this isn't how I remember this when it came out, because I know I covered it years back on Media Monarchy when I was just doing kind of pirate radio. So he's done this multiple times, showing I, that... I've, I learned about him doing this shtick a while ago with another couple of stories, and, and now I didn't realize. I was just Google. Uh, YouTube searching it and this one came up Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night TV Conan O'Brien might be about to push the envelope on late night TV I mean literally every, all back on and on and on and on and I, I was just that's what I was looking for something like that because that's what this company and I, I just to jump back to this James um, is owned it, they all seem to be owned by Trinity Mirror and it's on my blog it's the uh, 511 17 you know uh, May 11 2017 mm-hmm. uh, report here and I've got like maybe six or seven the mirror the sun Nottingham Post Cornwall Live Bristol Post Get Surrey. I mean literally goes on and on and on the same story and they're just different versions of it and um, you know and they're owned, all owned by the Trinity Mirror so I don't know what their uh, interest is to bash Mary our, our lovely Mary Jane but in one of them uh, with a quote here, it is a widespread issue across the country who are focusing our resources to target those connected with the cultiva- cultivation and dealing of the drug to help crack down on the issue. We would encourage anyone who suspects drug activity in their community to contact us, meaning the police. I mean, I, it, it, I mean it's literally 1937 reefer madness for the trinity mirror which is the, the the parent company that owns the 75 or 80 different publications i don't think they put it on every one of them but i couldn't i stopped i couldn't i kept going it's eight ten twelve of them all the oh, same wow. title that's crazy i mean well yeah. it's not crazy it's, yeah it's it shouldn't be part for the that course, much of a surprise <laughs> but obviously a coordinated thing and you know yes. we wouldn't think about it as much 
if they're all talking about the new movie that opens this weekend or also, you know, something that, you know, that would be standard in all the papers. But the fact that they're sort of pushing this in obviously all kinds of different cities, all kinds of different neighborhoods, kind of a coordinated effort. Yeah, and we have to catch it. We have to call them on it, you know, because they're shoveling the shit heavy here, and uh, it's night. It's you know, it's not 1937 anymore. People and literally, James, it's so beautiful to see all the comments on every page. They're all different, but they're all saying, "Are you fucking kidding me?" I mean, every <laughs> one of them just on and on about you know, like it, it, this is you know, it's you, you go and smoke with them, you know, just tons of you know, go go with your neighbors and hang out with them, or um, where did you get that strain, or you know, and on and on. <laughs> on. But, but it was mainly, to, and I posted about. I was like, here's some actual pertinent information about cannabis from 1974, 75 publication, which we get onto next about the cancer, you know, cutting the stopping THC, stopping the, you know, cancer from growing, you know, a study in, in Virginia medical institutes, like stuff like that. So, you know, I kind of went back and copied and pasted that on as many as I could, you know, as a comment, you know? Oh, nice. That's okay. Good. Well, and we'll of course include all these links and everything that we always say and mention will be included in the show notes for everybody to continue to do more research on their own. But yeah, this seems like a, a classic case of 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 an agenda. And I mean, yeah, I I can only speculate that the agenda has to probably to do with big pharma companies and for profit prisons. Yeah, big and, alcohol, tobacco. They they must have some type of you know, uh, interest in, in that. I'm just guessing. I'm not saying that they do, but, you know, or maybe they just don't like Mary Jane. And they want to demonize her. So they're, you know, but no one's paying attention to it. They're just, they're, they're screaming and no, and we're listening to, we're calling them on their bullshit, but they're not going to get through with any of it to maybe a few people, you know, if that, you know. Well, and these are all, you know, these are all the big tabloids. So yeah, I, I click on one of them, the mirror. What can I do if my neighbors are smoking cannabis? Read what <laughs> action you can take. So well, I, I shouldn't give them any ideas, but, you know, if they're going <laughs> to, if you smell something, say something. Is that yeah? The, that should be really, the that's it right there. That's the title right there. You should call that this this when we put this out next week. You should call it that. Hey, that's a good idea, actually. That yes, is, it is. <laughs> that always kind of comes at the last minute. You're almost ready to hit publish. It's like, oh yeah. wait, well, I don't have a title put, for put this. Put that thing. on the in the list of ideas to you know as the title. And it's just filled with you know. Now again, I guess if all of this has happened in, in the UK. I don't know the specific cannabis laws in the UK. It's all still yeah, pretty yeah. draconian there, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's we're basically look at read those articles. They're all stating that that it's illegal and the police will you know arrest you and you know it's and we're we're trying to make you know a, a light a little bit of light with this, but it's really a serious. Obviously, it's a fight here for freedom on this planet, and and you got to call these fuckers on this shit you know sorry i mean you know you know you, as soon as you told me i could curse them, this is just who i am so <laughs> i gave you a, a blank check for swearing yes, yes. I, I got another dollar i got the, the, the swear jars <laughs> filling up quickly today so i like how on this post you actually have some of the great counterpoints to you know essentially the propaganda of like oh, my neighbor's doing something bad and illegal and it's you know it just rings up all the ideas of all those like nosy busybody neighbors on sitcoms and things <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. but I but I have heard actually a similar thing here in Portland and, and, and here now, of course, it is legal. And now there are people in, in certain spots complaining that it's like, oh, all I can smell are my neighbors smoking weed all the time. <laughs> I don't know what kind of battles those are going to turn into. I don't actually have any articles in front of me to cite that. But I know I've read that in some of the local city papers and seen that on some of the local news tweets that, again, you know, you're in your backyard, you're allowed to smoke cannabis there. And I'm, you know, there is some, some kind of stipulations there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I get it. Some people, I mean, if it was cigarette smoke, I don't want to breathe that in, but, but I'll get to that in a couple of minutes. Um, there's a study about, you know, the carcinogen level of tobacco with nicotine versus cannabis, uh, with the cannabinoids. And it's, it's nowhere in the same vicinity to all. It doesn't, you know, but, um, you know, this is the thing you just said, it's like a, a battle and it's like all the, all the shit going on in the world. This is what this major publication with 75 or 80 different, there's James, they're spending money on these servers. They're spending so much money to push this out there when it, it literally acting like these people are terrorists. I mean, it's 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 just you know, call them to scream from the heavens, um, you know, from the mountaintops about these. This it's just um, well, it probably doesn't. Blowing. It probably doesn't cost a whole lot to run the servers. It's way more expensive for them to actually still be printing yeah, up printing you know, it physical yeah, newspapers. Yeah, so true. so I mean, so it's become easier for them to sort yeah. of push propaganda, copy and paste. Yep. Just as and the solution side is just as it's become easier for us to counter that propaganda yes. with That's truth. And hence, here we are. <laughs> 
So what else you got on the uh, on the list here as you run well, down the, the, the counterpoints? The next section is, is how I, you know, I counteracted it, which was all the studies. And, you know, you had sent me a study, and I had covered it on Monday. But, you know, it's tough because I cover all these different star, uh, stories, and I don't know which one's going to grab hold and what people are going to think is, you know, the most important one. But, um, you know, the study with the, with the mice and the cognitive... Um, uh, mental, you know, restoring your cognitive mm -hmm. abilities in old age. Well, the same type of studies with mice were, you know, 40 years ago, which the main one was um, the University of Virginia, I believe. I have it on my blog here. Give me a second here. Um, well, and while you're, oh, well, okay, yeah. if you got it, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. I, well, I was going to say while you're doing that, I'll say, you know, of course, the news that you and I are discussing, for the most part, you and I bandy about back and forth on the tweets just using hashtag Mary Jane Report, and you're yep. on Twitter at Mary Jane Report. Yep. So I know I shared that in my story, and now I'm, yes. of course, scrolling around looking for it. Yeah, no, no, ago. I was ah. going to say that that is a great story, but I like back in 74, 75, nobody covered this and people, and there's mm. a lot of people do know about this, but in, in the circles that I'm starting, you know, they know about it, but most people don't know in, in 74, here it is, Medical College of Virginia, THC CBN, they call it, um, reduces tumor size in mice. So they literally, you know, stopping cancer 43 years ago and they, they published it on uh, September 1st, 1975, and basically mice treated for 20 consecutive days with THC and CBN, which is cannabinol, that's C-A-N-N-A-B-I-N-O-L, CBN they're calling it, hmm. um, has reduced primary tumor size. So this was 74, 75. I mean, you know, I, so I, I, I counteracted this other stuff, this other copy and paste with the, you know, we just discussed, um, demonizing Mary Jane. And so this is what I usually use to counter because most people don't. This is very hard-hitting stuff. When you say this kills cancer or stops cancer from growing, and there's other studies too we'll cover quickly, but um, yeah, so that's kind of um, what I have uh, in that. There's another one uh, with the breast cancer. Uh, cannabinoids reduce breast cancer progression through, uh, in, uh, it says AKT inhibition. Now that's a protein uh, inhibition and basically goes on to say uh, res results show that both uh, THC and CB2 receptor antagonists reduce tumor growth, tumor number, and the amount severity of lung metastasis in mice. So that's another study that was by, I believe that was through the Complutense University in Madrid. And, and you've actually, is, you've, you've got all the, you link right I got all to the, links the research. And you should put them up. Yeah, you're, we're going to put this all up there. So, I mean, like I said, some uh, people know about this, but a lot of people don't. Because, you know, as people are becoming more, like mainstream media just locked on to that story this week about the mice. And I'm thinking, well, that's awesome. But, well, you know, what about this? So I wanted to bring, re, you know, revisit this again and get it out there again. So people are, you know, trying to, you know, spread this a little bit, you know, because it's huge, you know. And then there's Harvard. Yep, and there's Harvard. Now, I tried to find the actual Harvard study itself, but I do have the Science uh, Daily. Uh, if, uh, do you see the link, the link there from April 17th, yep. 2007? Yep. Uh, marijuana or cannabis cuts lung cancer tumor growth in half study from American and Association for Cancer Research. Um, the active ingredient in marijuana cuts tumor growth in common lung cancer in half and significantly reduces the ability of the cancer to spread. Say researchers at Harvard University who tested the chemical in both lab and mouse studies. There's the mice again. These poor mice. They're sacrificing for us. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a whole other, you know. Yep. Yeah whole other world of ethics and, and yeah. discussions there. But but again, you know, I like that your links here are not to news places talking about the studies, but it's links right to the studies. And again, that's, you got yeah, Harvard was, and you got that's NIH. That's what I'm trying to find. Because people, you get into a serious debate, you got to be right on. You got I used to have the PDF and I got the new computer and I'm really good at saving things, but somehow up with this new computer, there's no drive. There's no, uh, so I think I might have had it on a disc, like a, a CD disc backup of that. I had that car Harvard study backed up a few years ago on, a, on a, a PDF file of it. So, but I mean, this is pretty, you know, reputable science daily. So I'm, you know, thinking, but they, Harvard did that study. I know that. You know, so it's a matter of finding the actual document. You know, you're listening to the Mary Jane Report for the month of May. We are joined once a month for a look at cannabis news by our buddy Mr. Chris. He's over on the East Coast. I'm here on the West Coast. And dude, I'm kind of fighting a cold. I don't know if you can tell that my nose is kind of stuffed yeah, up. Yeah, that's little... why Mr. Chris is talking a little more this week. So it's I'm like, trying oh. to benefit my buddy James. And I hope. <laughs> it's funny, James. Yep, yep, there it is. <coughs> oh, jeez. Uh, <coughs> Hey, do you ever, um, really quick, uh, 
a, a little baking soda, like a half a teaspoon of baking soda, uh, like Bob's Red Mill baking soda, not Arm and Hammer. There might be some aluminum in there, but if you put that and mix it in a glass of wa- uh, water, and you know that really kind of helps. Anytime I get huh. sick, it really it just it alkalizes your system. You have to make sure it dissolves like a, about five minutes in the water, and then drink it down on an empty stomach. Okay, I have exactly Bob's Red Mill. Once again, baking, I'm not a doctor. Soda. I'm not recommending people to you know start, but but it helps me that small little amount. But you have to be careful too because you need your stomach acid to digest your food, so that it will alkalize your stomach a little bit temporarily. But it will al- when it gets in your system, it alkalizes your blood and whatever it does. It doesn't matter. I don't even need to tell me. It just helps me feel much better quicker. So I don't know if you ever try that. No, I haven't, but but I yeah. will. Um, you know, one of the other things, of course, you know, I'm not not exactly helping myself. I've always pretty much been a flower smoker, which I never knew it exactly had that name until all the recreational cannabis shops opened up. Oh, what are you interested in? Are you interested in oils or, or flour? Yeah. Like, yep. Oh, flour. Oh, okay. That's okay. That's what I smoke. They have to differentiate it now. Yeah. Yeah. So I've always smoked flour. So when it comes to times like this, like, oh, wait, I don't have any other alter- alternative means. So I still have a puff here and there, and then I'll start to cough. And I had my microphone turned down, but then you, you busted me. <laughs> um, well, you know what? Speaking of which, uh, let's, I just want to this last subject, uh, le- last sto- uh, study on this subject that we were just talking about um, is from the U.S. National Library of Medicine, National Institutes of Health. Now, they don't go into the exact study, but they do talk about cannabis and tobacco, which isn't what you're talking about. But, uh, but I did want to bring it up. Uh, cannabis, tobacco smoke are not equally carcinogenic. So um, basically, they, they say uh, cannabis smoke contains cannabinoids, whereas tobacco contains nicotine. Um, and they say available scientific data that examines the carcinogenic properties of inhaling smoke and its biological consequences suggests reasons why tobacco smoke but not cannabis smoke may result in lung cancer. Mm. You know, actually, I just we just found out the other day one of our one of our neighbors I think has has some tumors, and Ugh. he smokes like a freight train. He's an uh. older guy, retired guy. And so it's unfortunately not that much of a surprise. Unfor- I mean, yeah, it's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. It is. God, I know I've got uh, I've got a couple of you know really close friends that have been sober for you know probably a decade, decade plus plus. Sober from cigarettes. S- sober from alcohol. Alcohol, not <laughs> cigarettes. They, I'm thinking of two close people. Both of them sober. Both of them smoke. And even just on the, you know, the kind of joking in, it's like, oh, yeah, you want to get together this weekend? We'll have a great time smoking cigarettes together. It's like, you guys, you quit the wrong thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you had to pick, right? <laughs> I mean, alcohol is horrific on the body, but not as bad as that, I don't think. No, I know. Um, and I'm just, I'm, I'm, like a lot of times, I'm just trying to laugh to not cry about it, but. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. So we are talking to our buddy, Mr. Chris. We're doing our monthly Mary Jane report. I'm glad you're here, buddy. I appreciate we do this talk. Yeah, and again, pleasure, the time the time flies when we do this. This is our second month where we're recording for a half hour. And it's good to kind of get this out and, and do it in a little bit of yeah. a longer form. But we got a chunk of headlines we here we should we should start to blow through here on. And again, can, posted to can, your uh, site. What's yeah, up? sorry. Can we talk about? Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to bring something in which we didn't really talk about. Opera. We should have. Um, one of my speaking of close friends, uh, his son is autistic, and there's two stories: the Vermont issue, which Vermont will be the first state if the governor signs it, because it went through both houses to legalize cannabis and hemp. We could say um, by by legislation, not by ballot. And the other one is the uh, you know the cannabis and the autism thing, because my friend is is concerned and he wants to try you know the oil. He, he wants to. He wants to he wants to figure out a way to treat his son, mm. uh, who is who's now I think he's thirteen, going on fourteen, or he might be fourteen already. Uh, you know, for autism, with the, you know the cannabis treatment. And there's a story here. Obviously, I wanted to cover that. So I'm sorry. I just wanted to uh, you know put that out there. No, that's that's where I wanted to go. I want yep, you great, yeah start great. start hitting those. So the even that that one the autism story actually comes from Vice.com. The compelling yeah. case for treating autism with cannabis. Yeah, I have it. Yeah, do I have the vice? Yeah, I do have the vice. But there was also on uh, Huffington Post, maybe or no? Hmm. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's basically an uh, an Israeli advocate. Or it, says, it says her name is Abigail Dar. Uh, let me skip through here. Her son uh, is an autistic 23 year old. When he was 16, he started having seizures, and along with them came behaviors that make the difference between being able to live and take care of your child and giving up, hospitalizing, or institutionalizing him. So they lived through six terrible years. Um, let's scroll down. And then in 2015, 
um, they started using medical cannabis. And I, I, I don't know if you caught exactly what details. I couldn't find how they exactly delivered it to him. I don't know if he's smoking it because he's, he's, he's 20, you know, mm. he's, he's, or 16 when he was 16. Um, but uh, he's 23 now, so I'm thinking maybe he's smoking it. I don't know. But whatever it was, she said he's much more calm, smiling, attentive, and communicative now that now cannabis is in his life. And it's a whole other world, they're saying, basically. Huh. And well, and again, that maybe takes us back to the first story. Gosh, I wonder why all those gigantic corporate media outlets are trying to demonize this thing. Yeah, exactly. And that's why we're here to call them on their fucking bullshit as big as, uh, you know, as pile as you could possibly imagine, imagine steaming to the to the heavens. So oh. we talked about West Virginia last month, but now the article you've got here, Vermont has one signature away from legalizing cannabis. Yes, it's uh, it's going to the governor, and um, like I, I just mentioned, I, I was I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. I mean, once again, you and I discuss the whole freedom, common law issue to grow a plant. We shouldn't need permission from any mm -hmm. government or anyone, but we are in history right now in this crazy world that we do. But uh, it is it is, you know, news, newsworthy that they're going to do it without a ballot with the people deciding and they're actually doing it well the people want it but they're going to be doing it through legislation here so if, if it passes i'm sure i think at this point uh governor phil scott is probably gonna you know pass it we're, we're hoping you know because uh oh i'm bad at my geography you, you do you border vermont at all you're not no no i'm a couple states away okay yeah. that's what i thought there it's all pretty tight <laughs> over there on the east coast and i've been yeah, through yeah. all of them maybe even just tiny bits on a train <laughs> but i've been through yeah pretty much the entire eastern seaboard you have been through Vermont then? Just on a on an Amtrak train. Oh, and how is it? Because I heard it's beautiful. It was, yeah, it was great. We went wow. from, we basically went from West Virginia all the way to Portland, Maine on an Amtrak train. Mm, there's that Portland word again for you. I, I know. And we didn't even, I don't think we, we kind of knew at the time <laughs> <laughs> that we would end up being out here so long in the Portland, Oregon. So, you know, we're really close to. And that's all the wine country, all the wine country stuff. Uh, so there's, yeah. I mean, Willamette Valley wines here in Oregon are a massive thing. Maybe second, at least on the West Coast, to sort of Napa Valley wines in California. So your next article here, you got wine country looking more like cannabis country in California. And that's coming just from the Sacramento Bee. That's right. I didn't think we were going to get that far, but here we are, and I'm clicking on it right now. <laughs> Obviously, I, I when I, I read it when I uh, when I looked at it today. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it. California has got one of the biggest economies in the world, you know. So it's it's uh, and and the you know the cannabis industry is legal there now. So I, I'm I'm sure that the the wine and the you know hopefully they'll they'll find a happy medium here. <laughs> between the wine country and the cannabis country. Well, and I know anytime I I pick up. And I haven't actually been in months and months. Anytime I pick up some of the free magazines that are in the recreational shops, Dope and some of the other ones, um, you know, articles about sort of the mix of cannabis and wines and, you know, it gets into the tannins and all kinds of, you know, food science that I don't understand at all. But obviously there's a just a burgeoning, you know, I don't want to say industry, it's, you know, it's just going to be a sort of lifestyle explosion. And I think like you and I always kind of say, the great thing about a lot of this, yep, corporate whores are doing their best to profit. They basically prosecute through the prohibition and then they sort of win by by exploiting it all. But I don't think they're going to be able to hold it all because the very nature of the weed is it grows like a weed. And it just sort of it's a toothpaste out of the tube kind of thing, I guess. Yeah. And um you know, not to get too, you know, spiritual about it, but there's an energy on this planet that they can't stop this energy. There's nothing they can fucking do about it. There, there's, it's, it's not like we discussed before. It's not just cannabis. It's it that is a representation of people, you know, fighting and rising up against peacefully against the system. Um, you know, so it's it's uh, it's a beautiful thing. It's but it's it's sad in the process. People are still being incarcerated and their lives are being ruined. You know from uh these these you know aforementioned authority you know mm -hmm. as eric cartman would say <laughs> we don't want to respect their authority you know? well i mean and that's oh. why he's well, that's why he's a great character is he has oh all God. the pathos of 
an authority abusing sociopath. That's Absolutely. why he's so sort of entertaining as that character. Yeah, see, where I'm trying to bring the lighter, you know, we're trying to balance it here where it's informative and, you know, not entertaining. But I watched the uh, it was Scott Tennerman Must Die episode. Did you ever see that one where Cartman, I don't want to give it away, but it's, it's, one, of the, it's one of the most twisted era Cartman has ever been. I, th- I think so. You he basically harasses a kid to death, essentially. Well, this kid was, was, was messing with Cartman so it's bad. Radiohead? Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. I don't, okay. don't want to give it away to anybody else in case they haven't seen it, but it's That's just it. unbelievable. <laughs> so the last note, so we can maybe, uh, there's there's some bad news out of Australia. Australian government votes for patients to basically wait longer for medical marijuana, and that goes to BuzzFeed. But as long as we're talking good vibrations and talking California, yeah. there's one, this actually, this comes from the New Zealand Herald, but an article about California cannabis yoga retreat launches in California, which in some ways I'm sure you can laugh and be like, that's a hilarious like stereotype, <laughs> but a positive thing. It sure is. Um, cannabis and yoga. I mean, I, I do my own version of yoga and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I have like a six foot by six foot space and, um, you know, like, you know, I don't really smoke hardly mm-hmm. too often at all, but just, I can see how, you know, the, the, the attraction is for to, to mix the two together, <laughs> you know, because it's definitely something that, uh, yeah, it's mind body kind of energy and looks really cool. I've run across an article on Leafly, I believe, that said something about, you know, cannabis and working out and exercise aren't mutually exclusive. Now, I'm sure, again, it's it's all about the, the you know, what you're what you're taking yeah. and what you're working out on. But, but there is a way to do that. Oh yeah, I know a guy that used to. I, I could, I could get maybe afterwards, you know. But he he used to do it before, <laughs> during, and afterwards, you know. And he said he used to have great workouts, you know. So once again, it's it's people should be able to do whatever they want to do, you know, for as long as they're not, you know, hurting anyone else. And um, not to sound too simple and cliched, but, um, but yeah, no, I mean that's it. Whether whether you're a sick kid or the most yeah. decorated Olympic athlete ever. Or a Who's veteran with PTSD, or we can go on for a week. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. yep. Chris, I appreciate you having on to do these things, man. Yeah. I, you know, they, it goes super fast, but I like that we're able to kind of talk about these things and do it in a nice kind of kind of free fashion. We talked last month about, of course, how you know, and every, everybody's seen it on a lot of different levels of of indie media, alternative media, the sort of demonetization that's happening. And there's, mm-hmm. I think, I think the 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 vibrations are only kind of just beginning with YouTube and people kind of fleeing there and finding new ways to, you know, support your work, not through, you know, the new powers that shouldn't be that we've, you know, we've all willingly kind of given a lot more than we ever probably should have over the last 15 years to, but you've, I know struggled with, uh, so you couldn't get the Google monetization, right? No, no. So I'm, and I, I didn't realize this until after the six month period where I had to have the blog spot up for six months. And then I found out after. So now oh. I'm, I regrouped, I got the Mary Jane dot report URL. Um, so now I'm trying to figure out a way how, like I'm doing this, you know, just, I'm a musician and I, I'm, you know, please think about being a musician in this world and that's enough of an issue. <laughs> and so I'm doing this yeah, for free right now just to just get out because I'm, I'm such an advocate and I think this plant, like once again, isn't just the plant and the hemp and everything about it, which is to me 50, 60, 80% of it. It's the freedom aspect of people and this ever, yep. this, this revolution, you know, peaceful revolution that's kind of, you know, going on, I think. You're exactly right. So, what are the what are the what are the best ways for people to get your work and and support you then? Well, um, if you if you do uh, you know www mary jane dot report um, that or my mary jane report uh, dot blogspot dot com, I usually do put a PayPal donation at the bottom, a little link. So I do have that set up. You can you know don't donate there. Um, and you know my Twitter page is I love the Twitter page, but you know obviously you're not making you know like I said I'm not trying to make money, but I'd like to continue doing this and build it, and it, and it would help with a little bit. I don't have to tell you and all the independent media about this. I'm preaching to the choir here, but James, one last thing before we go. Yeah, buddy. I just I just wanted to state, and I said it before, but. Um, I just want to say that I, I don't claim to be an expert on cannabis and hemp. I'm just a passionate, intelligent human being trying to bring the news and the best of my ability to people and for them to do their own research as well. And, um, you know, 
you know, I, I just wanted to say that because I know, you know, you might get somebody saying that, oops, they don't know what they're saying or whatever. And I just want to, you know, put that out there that um, I don't claim to be an expert in cannabis and help. I mean, I know a lot about it and I'm pretty smart mm-hmm. um, and, uh, and I'm a huge ad- advocate and passionate about it. And, uh, you know, it's just a pleasure to be growing this, you know, uh, at the same time of, uh, of this energy growing on the planet with, uh, you know, hemp and cannabis, not to sound like a broken record, but, uh, you know, the, the freedom energy that's happening, you know. That's a great way to wrap this up. That's a great way. It's the positive way. It's the energy way. And I appreciate it, man. So that's Mr. Chris from MaryJane.Report for the May edition of Mary Jane Report. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonica.com. Mr. Chris, thank you so much for joining us, man. Take care. Great, James. Thanks. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology and the occult all remixed with music and media that matters go to mediamonarchy.com slash support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent non-commercial alternative media going and growing thanks